Hello and welcome to this video where I'd like to continue sharing my experiences with the Canon R5 mirrorless camera. A friend of mine recently told me about the town of Tourbal in Australia. There's a chance here to photograph wading birds and others on the shoreline. Tourbal is only 60 kilometers north of Brisbane but it's a really lovely spot on the Pumice Stone Passage. This is a stretch of sheltered water protected from the Pacific Ocean by Bribie Island. It's probably why the birds like it so much. It was my initial intention to just scout the place for a future photo visit. But I put my camera and lens into the car, you never know. It was an afternoon on an overcast day, so it wasn't great conditions or the best time of day for bird photography. However, I did stumble onto a spoonbill, who seemed to be queen of her domain, assuming of course that it is a queen. Further along the Pumice Stone Passage, I found an egret who looked just a little bit ruffled. There were also plenty of Far Eastern curlews along the sandbar, sometimes more than I really wanted. I continue to be impressed by the Canon R5 mirrorless camera, especially when I use it coupled with the 100 to 500 mm RF lens. I'm not new to this type of long lens photography. I've been a user of Canon's 100-400mm EF zoom for many years, so I'm well aware of the pros and cons of long lenses like these. I've taken quite a number of bird images with this older zoom over the years. Now this has made me wonder, is the success that I'm having with the Canon R5 due to its in-body and lens stabilisation, along with its great focus abilities? Or is it the fact that I've been doing more of this style of photography lately, simply because the R5's reputation with bird photography is so good? Now I suppose we could say, does it really matter? Because the Canon R5 is working out pretty well. But I tend to think that this camera just may be the game changer that some say it is. Let's take a look at one or two of the images that I shot. We'll take a look at the techniques and also the technical details. So there's the shot of the spoonbill doing what spoonbills do on the shoreline. As you can see by the technical details bottom left, the lens was zoomed out to its maximum of 500mm. I wasn't quite at the infinity range, so we still needed to focus on the bird. 16 hundredths of a second was possible at f7.1 using 400 ISO. Now we should talk a little bit about what focus options I was using. Firstly, I've set aperture priority on my camera. I set the Continuous shooting to continuous plus, which is the fast option on the Canon R5. Using the Q button on the back of the camera brings up these options and I selected the large zone autofocus horizontal. Now you can see that as long as we keep that oblong shape over the bird in question, then the camera is going to focus on that bird. Now we probably could argue that we don't absolutely need that sort of focusing for one single bird. Most of the shots the bird was static, here it's just walking from right to left. We could have used spot focus. But if the bird suddenly took flight, with these settings I can hit that button, capture a number of shots and I'll be focused as the bird flies away. Now I suppose we could always make a small sudden movement and perhaps the bird would take flight, but I'm not entirely comfortable doing that sort of thing. If the bird flies while I'm photographing it, fair enough, but I don't feel happy to scare it away. 
Now as photographers we're always looking for something different and we're never satisfied. Have you noticed that? The previous shots were okay, they were all sharp and they showed the bird pretty well. But I like this shot because it does look like we have a queen standing in her domain and there she has the parade in front of her. If I zoomed into this shot you would notice that the curlews are very very slightly soft because they're in a slightly closer plane of focus than the bird I actually focused on. So maybe given the shutter speed was up to 2500 I should have been a bit more cute and actually dropped the aperture down maybe to f11. As you can see here there were quite a number of these curlews, in fact a lot more than is shown here. The problem we have with a shot like this is we don't really have a good centre of interest. If one of the birds jumped up and flapped its wings or took off we would have something to focus on. We also have to consider where we're going to focus. Are we going to focus on the foreground birds and allow the ones in the background to go soft? I think that's acceptable. If we focus on the background birds and let the foreground ones go soft, for reasons I'm not able to explain, that doesn't sit quite so comfortably with me. Now these birds were quite nervous and they certainly didn't like me at all. They allowed me to get to a reasonable distance with that 500mm lens but sometimes one step further one bird would take flight and scare all the rest into the sky. And as you can see it's very difficult then to pinpoint a good image to capture the birds without having lots of different parts of the birds in and out of the frame. So we need to be a little more patient and try to isolate fewer birds so we can keep them in the frame where we want them. With any of these birds that I shot in flight, every single one was sharp. There's an old saying that I often apply to wildlife photography. You win some and you lose some. It's all part of the game. Here we have quite a nice group. But if you look down at the bottom right, a couple of birds are overlapping, just spoiling the fly pass just a little bit. But of course, modern Photoshop would deal with that without too much trouble. In a slightly different location, I found this lone egret. It was shaking its body from the beak to the tail, a little bit like you see with a dog when it comes out of the water. If we zoomed in very tight on the head, it's very, very, very slightly soft. But the rest of the bird is pin sharp and we know the image is sharp because we can even see the droplets of water around the bird's head. A five hundredths of a second was enough to capture a nice shot. But as soon as the bird starts to move quite violently shaking its head, then a five hundredths of a second is a little bit on the slow side. This image is another in the same button press sequence from the previous one, hence the same shutter speed. These birds look very majestic to me. The Canon R5 and that 100 to 500 mm lens, the in-body image stabilization in the camera and also in the lens, plus the R5's ability for very good focus has allowed me to capture this pin sharp shot. I could print this image enormous and it would be pin sharp from the tip of the beak right the way through the bird. I think using the Canon R5 has given me a little more confidence with birds like this, particularly when they take flight. Now I've been a serious photographer for over 50 years and I'm still learning. But what I liked about this particular afternoon is I went out with the Canon R5 and that long lens on an afternoon that wasn't perfect both in time or lighting, yet I've managed to capture some images which I'm prepared to show 
and I only do that for images I think are worth viewing. And that gives us confidence. Once we have a bit of confidence with the equipment we're using, then all we need is the right day at the right time. And with a bit of patience, that'll come. I'll see you next time.